Not sure when or how the idea of completely restoring a vintage airstream happened. Can't even remember when it sounded like a good idea either. It certainly wasn't part of our nomadic plan on a farm with chickens and goats. Lots and lots of goats. Farm life isn't easy with its own day-to-day -day challenges. But then again, restoring a 45-year-old Airstream has its challenges also. Just never thought we would spend so much time on this tiny little farm. Back and forth, to and from, and the monotony of wondering just how much she would fight us that day. But we did, and she was a project of epic proportions from the very beginning. We really had no clue on the amount of work, labor, or money, let alone time that we would spend and no real idea where to even start. I mean, where do you start? The idea was very romantic. The reality was somewhat overwhelming. How are you feeling? That's good. <laughs> we, got the, we got a drawer in. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> <laughs> you have no idea how long that took. <laughs> I do. I was there. I do know how long it so, took. We pretty much spent the last two half days trying to get one frame built to hold one, well, hold to hold three drawers, but so we finally got the frame built and we have one drawer semi in and, uh, well, I'm going to call it a success. Because I need a little success at the moment. So it's a success. It's a success, <laughs> baby. After all, our nomadic idea is a culmination of everything we want to run to, explore and see, and even possibly run away from. Ariane spent 15 years in retail, working 50 hours a week with little to nothing to show for it. It spent 10 years selling insurance and 10 in the IT field with little to nothing to show for it. We wanted to travel together, explore before time caught up with us, to live without the chains of what is normal and push beyond our limits of comfort. The approved two-week vacation or the white picket fence with a mortgage we would never pay off. We love the freedom of travel when we want, where we want, how we want, hitting backpacking trails in the wilderness with our two dogs, of course. I through hiked the Appalachian Trail in 2003 Ariane started as a rock climber and also loves backpacking, apparently in really bad weather. Hi. Brad, I'm going to try. It's tame. We try to hike in this shit. We were meant for each other. It's the outdoors that binds us together, that renews our soul, that keeps us feeling alive and young. But then we watched this. If you've ever dreamed of building a unique and beautiful small space, simplifying your life, getting off the grid and escaping the rat race, then this is your channel. And this nomadic idea was born. So early on in Scott and I, uh, us dating, we started watching a TV show. I think it was Tiny Home Nation. Was it Tiny Home Nation? So one Saturday on a complete whim, we went to a tiny home show. Um, and we wanted to kind of see what was out there in terms of minimalism, which we were already doing, being backpackers and backpacking as much as we had, and kind of pairing that with more travel. Uh, it wasn't anything that we expected. When we got there, we quickly learned that it was, it was more like a let's sell you a tiny home uh, at an exuberant cost. Um, so... We kind of walked around, started talking to people, still kind of believing that perhaps this is something that could work for us. And you could almost see the lie in their eyes. They, 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 they were trying to sell a lifestyle that they didn't even believe in. 
So we ended up meeting this guy named Gypsy who lived in a uh, truck camper and he really had it all together. I mean, he wasn't really there for the tiny home show. He was there boondocking and kind of sneaking in with the tiny homes. And we, we just connected to this guy right away and we felt like this is a true nomad. This is a guy who knows what he's talking about. And after talking to all these big tiny home owners, um, it wasn't too early that we realized these guys are pulling like 20,000 pounds and there's just no way any of these tiny homes would ever want to go or could ever go where Ariane and I wanted to go. All of the restrictions that they fell under and travel became very, very difficult for them, which was the crux of really what we had wanted to do. And so we knew right off the bat tiny home was not going to happen for us. So we walked away completely discouraged that that the lifestyle seemed like it just wasn't for us. And I think in our minds going, we had kind of concluded that we would find our answer here. Um, so we leave knowing exactly what we didn't want. And I start pulling out and there are these cars waiting for me to pull out because it was crowded, they wanted my parking spot. And as we're getting ready to leave, we see this, this beautiful trailer in the park and it was like the clouds were parting. We see this like beacon of light coming down. It's almost like when the when the skies part and that one sunbeam aims in a particular direction, uh, we saw a trailer and it almost looked to be glowing. And we're like, what's that over there? And it had a for sale sign in it. And so we went and it was an Airstream Argosy. I knew what an Airstream looked like. It was chrome, it was shiny. You could see your reflection in it. But this was painted white and we didn't know what it was. And the guy told us it was a Argosy and it had panoramic windows. It was a center bath. And we were, it's, it, it, it was like, oh man, we just found what we came to look for. It, is beautiful it's absolutely gorgeous so we walk inside i have never stepped foot into a trailer before then um we get inside and i just it wasn't anything of what i had anticipated it being it was bright inside it was roomy and airy and there was just so much natural light coming on to into the inside and so we started talking with this guy. Uh, he was definitely selling. And it was exactly our style. Um, and so we drove home that night and I think we had, we we're like, I, we're gonna buy this thing. I think this is what we want. And within the two hour ride home, we had convinced ourselves somehow to make an offer on that specific trailer. And it was the panoramic windows, it was the light, it was so bright. And um, it ended up being um, exactly what we wanted. It didn't necessarily work out that way. Um, every time I offered him his sale price, he would, he would increase it. Every single time we made an offer to him, he raised the price on us. So after about three days of negotiation, uh, we were willing to come up because we were so in love. It turns out he wasn't quite ready to sell. And up to the point where I finally called him, like, do you even want to sell your Airstream Argosy anymore? And he was like, I don't know. I don't know if I want to sell it. He goes, I'm going to go down to Florida, though. I'm going to think about it. So that was the end of that. And we were pretty, um, you were kind of beaten down by it. But that did not stop us. We went on a hunt and became obsessed with a 28 foot center bath 1976 Airstream Argosy.
So I just got done. Uh, I just got done painting the bottom half of our Argosy, and uh, nothing like hauling a 250-pound compressor about 100 yards, and then 100 yards back with one flat tire. Um, not uh, not easy. So six months later, we are in Moorhead, Kentucky, looking at the exact trailer we were on a manhunt to find. And she lived in Moorhead, Kentucky, uh, where the college is. And she said, I, I remodeled it. Oh, well, it's beautiful. I'm like, really? And, she, and I go, what's the floor like? And she said, oh, I redid the floor. And well, it wasn't that much longer, Ariane and I are hauling it to Moorhead, Kentucky to take a look at this Airstream and when we got there it wasn't exactly how she had mentioned it. Except it wasn't anything. It didn't look anything like the trailer we had seen in the parking lot. But eh, it was within acceptable parameters of what we wanted to take a look at and we slept in it the first night it wasn't it was practice talked about it and then let the negotiations commence it was beat up it was dented it was it just wasn't as beautiful <laughs> on the outside and I remember thinking to myself, this is nothing like the photos of what I had seen. Well, they were asking a little bit too much for the trailer. Um, we had a budget. We knew we had done some research, obviously since the first time we had seen the Argosy at the Tiny Home Show. And we knew, don't spend a lot of money on these things. And so they were asking a little bit too much. We had a set price. And so what we basically did was just wear them down by you know, hooking it up to the the Ford Expedition. Getting ready to go, I'm like, ah, eh, I don't know. The, you know, wheel rot, lights don't work, there's no battery in it, I don't even know if this thing will make it. And so we kept on wearing them down, so we negotiated for almost a day until they finally said, for the love of God, just get off our property. <laughs> and we pulled away with a 76 Airstream Argosy with exactly the amount of money that we wanted to spend and not a penny more. Uh, needless to say, we did not know our first night would be in a Walmart parking lot. But apparently that's where all the RVs go to boondock. We're not going to have to go much higher. See that? Okay, yeah, I do. Alright, this is the pivotal moment, you guys. Oh, it's not pivotal. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, Walmart uh, had said that they would put on uh, new tires for us. We we're pretty excited about that. Um, I had not really recently jacked up a uh, camper trailer to change a tire. Um, but once they saw uh, this uh, particular Airstream pull in their parking lot, they said, oh, hell no. And round two of negotiation, <laughs> um, could you please change the tires because the tires that have dry rot and so our first night in our Airstream Argosy was in the Walmart back parking lot in the tire section with them wheeling the new tires on the rims and me underneath the Airstream putting them on. And the next morning, uh, the very beautiful, nice lady manager in the auto section of Walmart in Moorhead, Kentucky, made us coffee the next morning. Ooh, beautiful. Perfect. 
Frank, straighten it out. Keep going. Perfect. Ooh, uh, the process of renovating on the farm, it has not been easy. Um, we've been faced with challenge after challenge after challenge. We saw the farm as a space, a safe space to bring our trailer to be able to work on it when we needed. We were under the illusion that we would have endless amount of tools to work with, um, space, water, uh, electricity, and none of which we were promised came without a lot of challenges. <laughs> So uh, this is uh, our little uh, tool shed that we have on the farm. It's not much, um, but it definitely has some tools to do the job. Electricity alone was a nightmare. Uh, we kept blowing fuses. Um, we would have to share on a time schedule the electricity, so that hindered us in a lot of projects. Um, the We contended with the farm itself, the space, the elements, um, tractors throwing dust all over the place, um, farm animals, while they're absolutely amazing creatures and they're really enjoyable to be around, when you're renovating a trailer, it becomes very challenging to contend with a swarm of goats that are interested in what you're doing. Well, it might even be good for this from the side. Uh, chickens that uh, want to fly in your face. Get that thing out of there. Uh, births that don't go so well. Um, the farm itself became a a point of delay for us. Well, she certainly looks and that we hadn't expected so our timetable quickly uh, turned exponentially long on us um, and that's something that we couldn't have anticipated coming in um, and it just seemed like we had obstacle after obstacle um, we were given such a beautiful gift of having to park here and having any kind of tool that we needed at our disposal were 40 years old. Um, most of them didn't work. The ones that did work were rusty, the cords were frayed, and um, right off the bat, it was a challenge once we really started getting into the nit and gritty of the renovation process, and we quickly realized that this was not gonna be a three to six month deal um, because we'd get here and there'd be no electricity um, or we'd get here and we there, there would be something that would uh, block us from actually working on the Airstream. <laughs>
another challenge that we actually faced that I never saw coming was our relationship. Um, it was strong, but it was challenging to work together on a project um, as important as this because a lot of the things we didn't know how to do. We didn't know how to be a carpenter. All right, let's see if this works. So you think we got it? Well, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> so we're trying to make a template out of here, and we're trying to get the curves perfect because what this piece is, it's going to fit on top of here. Or a plumber or an electrician. Today I'm working on the, the 120 volt system. This would be your shore power. We didn't know how to remove the, the inner skins of the of the airstream it was hard it was physically hard it was demanding we had to be cohesive and work together but yet scott and i have completely different ways of going about doing things he does things one way and i do things completely polar opposite of him and so trying to find the balance to work together in stressful times was took a toll on our relationship and it, it was honestly really tough at times and then there was a period of time that we figured out that we worked better separately so the uh the brains of the whole operation are in there now um converging on a major design meeting to make our couch and they kicked me out of the airstream <laughs> I think once we kind of got over the initial, um, you know, you have to be a NASA scientist to actually renovate an RV. Once we got over that hurdle and we decided to make this renovation our own, good, bad, indifferent, um, was it going to work? Was it not going to work? We were going to fix it no matter what. Once we made it our own, the renovation process started really coming together and Ariane and I really kind of became, um, you know, we owned it. We owned the renovation and we stopped getting four and fifth and sixth opinions. We just looked at a couple things and said, I think this is the way that's going to work. And that's what we did. <laughs> You know, uh, we thought this thing was going to be done a long time ago, and um, I think of of the sacrifices that we both have made to uh, live a full-time life on the road in this Airstream, and it hasn't been easy. You know, we, um, we would take two steps forward and then sometimes take three steps back, and uh, so it's been back and forth. Um, you know, we've, we've made a lot of work compromises and uh, sometimes in spite of knowing that we're moving forward, it certainly doesn't feel good when you see the other person so miserable um, because they're, they're still doing what they don't want to do in life. And uh, so, yeah, it was contentious sometimes uh, with this whole project, for sure. Um, uh, but I think in the end, you know, both of... Both of us are on the same page about what we want in our lives. And and when something goes wrong in the airstream or she would ask, how did it go today? Um, I would say, you know, the airstream beat me. Uh, it just defeated me. I couldn't get anything done. And I would go back and say, how's your your day? And 
you know, she would say my job sucks. And so, you know, we had to find that balance uh, with each other with the project. And of course, you know, we, we didn't really get out as much backpacking as we used to when we first started dating because of this life that we're trying to build. And a lot of it happened to be um, this farm renovating a 76 Airstream. And then one day, completely out of the blue, we were done. We were completed with all the big tasks. We had nothing left to work on outside of little, little aspects uh, of, of putting it together in its final stages. And I, I couldn't believe it. It, it just, it was, it, it seemed, it, it almost seemed like a door opened and all of a sudden we were complete. Like I hadn't seen it coming. You would think I would have, but this one day, a snap of a finger, done. And it turned into looking and feeling like a space that we had envisioned the entire time. It felt like home. It wasn't frustrating to walk into anymore, or it wasn't, I, I didn't regret, or I, I didn't, I didn't hesitate to come work on it. I, it, it felt, it felt inviting. It, the space itself was welcoming and I would walk in and just look in awe at this is our home. We finally did it. We finally made it. And I don't, I don't know how we got there. It's been a really long road, but when I look around and I look at, you know, how hard we worked on this thing and the little things that just picked out here and there and uh, going to the antique st stores and finding our lifestyle and finding what we knew was going to make us happy in the Airstream because, you know, at the end of the day, it's not really about the Airstream. It's about your lifestyle on the road. And it's not about, you know, what camper you have or what fifth wheel or what motor home or, you know, what van you have. You know, it's about your lifestyle and what makes you, what makes you happy. And when I come into the Airstream, you know, I, I'm happy. It, it worked out exactly the way we we had always envisioned it from the very first time we saw that Airstream Argosy in the field. Um, it's exactly what we knew it was going to be. Um, despite all of our um, dreams of grandeur, despite all of the great woodworking projects I was going to do and with trap doors and things like that, and despite all of our ideas, um, it ended up being exactly what we needed and what we wanted. And so it's done. And um, I'm really, really proud of ourselves. Did it all go perfect? Um, did I make mistakes? Oh, I absolutely made a lot of mistakes. Um, you know, did I have a nervous breakdown one time and cry in a fetal position like a baby? Yes. Yes, I did. Um, but I think in the end, it, I, I would not have traded any of the knowledge that I have gained uh, personally for myself in um, learning new things and learning how to put an RV together uh, from scratch. Um, because this really isn't a renovation process. This is taking a 40-year-old Airstream completely apart and then putting it Back together again piece by piece and so when people ask me did you renovate an Airstream I almost want to say well yes but I also built an Airstream one time too <laughs> and other than cutting the aluminum and riveting the aluminum on the frame I feel like I've come pretty close and uh, I think that's pretty 
rewarding in the end. 